Hey. Dude, what's up? Heard you got caught cheating, man. Yeah, my professor wants to talk to me about it tomorrow. That's rough, dude. You nervous? No, man. That's cool. I'm just gonna avoid him this week. You watch. He'll forget the whole thing. It's no big deal. Hey, man. If you say so. Seriously, what's the worst that could happen? I'm not even gonna sweat it. I'm just gonna watch some TV and chill for a bit. Hey, man. Good luck with that. Later. Later. There's my college man. Why so glum, sport? Well, I got caught cheating. Cheating? I didn't even know you were dating. <laughs> no. Cheating on a test. What? What's this all about? Oh, gee whiz, Dad, it wasn't my fault. The kid in front of me didn't cover his test and I couldn't help but see the answers. Well, son, you are right. It was his responsibility to protect his work and cover his exam. But it was your responsibility to resist cheating. In fact, if any of the other students in the class saw you cheat, it was also their responsibility to tell the instructor right away. But isn't that being a snitch? No. It's the right thing to do. It's really not fair to the other students in the class who studied for the exam if you get a better grade because you cheated. Don't you want your degree to mean anything? Oh, sure I do. But everyone does it. But that doesn't make it right, does it? No, I guess it doesn't. My professor didn't seem to think so either. She gave me an F in the course. And then I got this warning letter from the dean of student's office. The letter says that now I have a confidential file in their office for the next seven years. And if I get caught again, I could get kicked out. What made you feel like you had to cheat anyway? How much studying did you do? Not too much. I guess I just wasn't prepared. Well, you can fix that. Here's what you need to do. Set aside study time every day. Be prepared for every class and talk to your professors during their office hours if you get in trouble. Gosh, Pop, it sure would be a lot easier if someone could just invent some electronic handheld device that had all the answers on it. Electronic handheld device? <laughs> Sounds to me like you've been reading too much science fiction. <laughs> Thinking like that will just cheat yourself then why even bother to go to college? If you don't watch out, you might end up working as a clown at that newfangled hamburger place. Dinner is ready, you two. Hurry along now. Okay, dear. Son, you're lucky that you only got a letter of warning. You don't want to ruin the reputation of a fine institution like Cal State Fullerton. Oh, golly gee, you're right, Dad. Cheating isn't worth it. I'm going to work harder and set aside more hours to study so I can do better in my classes. That's the right attitude, son. Besides, you want to keep your grades up so you can hold on to that football scholarship like dear old dad. You know, Cal State Fullerton's football team has been undefeated for over 20 years now. <laughs> <laughs> This just in, a Cal State Fullerton student was expelled today for academic dishonesty. We go now to Sandy in the field, who has more on this story. Thank you, Sandy. We have just learned that a Cal State Fullerton student has used a so-called hired brain in their online class. I am here with Professor Bergdorf from Cal State Fullerton to talk about the situation. Professor. What exactly is a hired brain? Uh, that is when a student has someone else take an exam or even an entire class for them. Sometimes a student actually pays someone 
and other times the student just asks a friend or a relative to help them out. It is one of the most egregious acts of dishonesty because students don't do their own academic work but they expect to receive credit for it as if they had actually learned the material. Does this mean that these students are incapable of passing the class on their own? No, not always. Most would have passed if they had only applied themselves, if they had talked to their instructor or managed their time better. And even if students do poorly because they don't do these things, that's still better than failing the class for dishonesty and in this case being permanently removed from all CSU campuses. So if a student uses a hired brain, they are expelled from all 23 CSU campuses. Yes. It seems odd then that students would risk all of that and their reputations. We caught up with the student in question earlier on campus, and this is what she had to say. Excuse me, excuse me, why did you do it? Why Look, I just didn't have time to bother with it, okay? It was an online GE course. It wasn't even part of my major. They make it too easy to cheat. Professor, your reaction? Well, students need to remember that online courses require the same rigorous scholarship as in-person classes. Students like this young woman are just cheating themselves. They will get caught. Sandy, I can tell you that as professors, we expect our students to be honest and trustworthy. We expect them to be scholars and invested in their own education. Otherwise, what's the point of being a student at all? We are here to help students achieve their academic and career goals and encourage them to be successful. Thank you, Professor. Well, there you have it. Live from Cal State Fullerton for Integrity News Network, this is Sandy. Back to you, Sandy and Sandy, in the studio. Thank you, Sandy. Sandy? Sandy? News! I used to be embarrassed about my bad grades. I was ashamed to show my family and friends. Then one day, I talked to my professor, and he recommended studying. If you currently suffer from bad grades, studying may help. Tests prove studying to be more effective than guessing alone. Studying should not be considered a replacement for regular class attendance. Clinical trials have shown studying to be even more effective when combined with a healthy note-taking regimen. Side effects may include raised GPA, lessened anxiety, increased self-esteem, restful nights, and a decreased urge to cheat. Some students have reported earlier than expected graduations. If after an examination it's determined that you are still getting bad grades, consult your professor immediately as this may be a sign of another problem. 10 out of 10 professors have recommended studying to their students. So if you're suffering from bad grades, know that you're not alone. Talk to your professor today and see if studying is right for you. I've never heard that before. It's more than that. I think, I think you're wrong. Hi, puppets. What are you three arguing about? Hi, Sandy. Maybe you can help us. Bingle said that academic dishonesty was just cheating on test, but I said it was more than that. Yes, you're right, Tuffy. Would you like me to tell you more? Sure. Here's how I define academic dishonesty. It's the attempt to gain an unfair academic advantage or assisting or permitting another to do so. Uh, what does that mean? Well, actually, cheating can mean lots of things. It can mean that you do something deceptive to get a better grade than you deserve, or that you help a friend get a better grade than he or she deserves, or even that you simply let someone else do something to get a better grade than they deserve. Huh? Well, for instance, you know that you could copy exact words from the internet and act like they are yours. That's one kind of cheating. But you could also give your friend your completed assignment before it is due, knowing that your friend would probably copy some of it. Or you could even see someone cheat during an exam and not tell the professor. Doing any of these things is unfair to the rest of the students in the class. You're also cheating yourself out of learning. Wow, that seems like a lot of stuff. Do you want to know more? Well, let's talk about something called unauthorized collaboration. 
which means that you get too much help on an assignment from another student when you were supposed to complete it by yourself. Can you give us an example? Certainly. Let's say you and I were in the same class together and decided to meet and talk about the assignment. But instead of just helping each other understand what we had to do, we instead completed it together so that our work looked the same or almost the same. Wow. wow. Another way students get in trouble for academic dishonesty is by falsifying academic records. This could mean forging records like academic transcripts, applications for admission, registration materials, or even attendance forms. Have you ever done anything like that, Bingles? No, not me. I've never even been to school. What? I'm a kangaroo. Oh, yeah. One of the common types of academic dishonesty is plagiarism. Oh. Uh, what exactly does that mean? Plagiarism is taking the work of another person and claiming it as your own in any written assignment. Work can be another person's words, their ideas, their research, their charts, their PowerPoint, their poetry, their music, anything that someone else creates from their own brain, not yours. I'm sorry, Sandy, but I don't think we got that. Let me make it easier for you. Using someone else's words, ideas, research, or creations without acknowledgement, credit or citation, is intellectual theft. Oh. Or passing off another person's words, ideas, research, or creations as your own to get a better grade or gain some kind of advantage is fraud. Oh. In essence, plagiarism is both stealing and lying. Oh, no. It means you are claiming that words or ideas are your own when they belong to someone else. But how exactly do people plagiarize? Well, students cut and paste word for word or near word for word information from websites to create a paper or copy a paper from a source without proper citation or copy from a source and then delete some words, rearrange the order of sentences or plug in substitute words here and there. Plagiarism is even turning in the same paper for two different classes without the permission of the instructors. Those are a lot of examples. So, puppets, you can see that plagiarism is a very serious offense. It also shows disrespect for your professor and other students. Wow. Is that everything we need to know about academic dishonesty? Well, Bingles was correct in thinking that cheating on tests is a form of academic dishonesty. How so? You could get in trouble for using electronic devices during the test, or you could be penalized for talking with fellow students, looking at another person's exam, getting hold of the test before the exam, changing the answers on a graded exam, and asking for a regrade. But as you can see, cheating on tests is not the only form of academic dishonesty. Wow, Sandy, you really know a lot. But how will we ever remember all of it? Maybe this will help. Making integrity count is more than one, two, three. Making integrity count takes commitment from you and me, 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 me. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Learning is preeminent. We've all heard that cry. But learning without integrity makes people like me sigh, 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 sigh. Integrity, what's that mean? Do you think we all agree? I think honor, respect, truthfulness, and responsibility. Looky here. Students want to be successful. That we can't deny. So it's up to you to see it through. Integrity starts with I, 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 I. Making integrity count is more than one, two, three. Making integrity count takes commitment from you and me, 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 me. Today's episode of Integrity Street was brought to you by the numbers under 2.0 and by the letter F. This is Name That Paraphrase with your hosts, Vanna Stein and Sandy Trebek. Thank you, Johnny. And now for the final round of Name That Paraphrase. Let me recap. 
We all know that plagiarism is stealing and lying. And our contestants today are competing to see who can demonstrate the best paraphrasing to avoid plagiarism. Let's review our scores. Mackenzie, you have 500 points. Luis, you have 700 points. And Keith, you have 200 points. Today's final round is worth 1,000 points. Let's get started. Here's a warm up for you. We have an article authored by Lester. Students frequently overuse direct quotation in taking notes, and as a result, they overuse quotations in the final research paper. Probably only about 10% of your final manuscript should appear as directly quoted matter. Therefore, you should strive to limit the amount of exact transcribing of source materials while taking notes. J.D. Lester, Writing Research Papers, 2nd edition, 1976, pages 46 and 47. Here's what might happen if you plagiarize his work. Students often use too many direct quotations when they take notes, resulting in too many of them in the final research paper. In fact, probably only about 10% of the final copy should consist of directly quoted material. So it is important to limit the amount of source material copied while taking notes. As you can see, this version is entirely too close to the original, so it is not a correct paraphrase and would be considered plagiarism. So let's now see how to appropriately paraphrase the article. In research papers, students often quote excessively, failing to keep quoted material down to a desirable level. Since the problem usually originates during note taking, it is essential to minimize the material recorded verbatim. J.D. Lester, Writing Research Papers, 2nd edition, 1976, pages 46 and 47. In this version, the author of this paraphrase has read and understood the original work and has put those ideas into their own words with the correct citation or credit for the idea. Contestants, are you now ready to play? All right, here's your original article. While the Sears Tower is clearly the greatest achievement in skyscraper engineering so far, the question is, just how high can a building go? Structural engineer William Lamage has designed a skyscraper nearly one half mile high, twice as tall as a Sears Tower, and architect Robert Sobel claims that existing technology could produce a 500-story building. Ron Bachman, Reaching for the Sky, Dial, May 1990, page 15. You now have three minutes to appropriately paraphrase this article by reading and understanding the content and putting the author's ideas into your own words. Now, in order to earn points, you need to do this without distorting the original meaning and by giving appropriate attribution or credit. All right, start. Time's up. Let's see your answers. McKinsey? While the Sears Tower is clearly the greatest achievement in skyscraper engineering so far, the question is, just how tall can a building be? Structural engineer William Lamage has created a skyscraper design nearly one half mile high, twice as tall as a Sears Tower. And architect Robert Sobel believes that existing technology could result in a 500-story building. Bachman, 1990. I'm sorry, Mackenzie, that is not correct. You did not put your answer in the form of a paraphrase. You just substituted some new words for the original words. Luis, let's see what you have. It's clear that the Sears Tower is engineering's greatest achievement to date, but just what is the limit for how high a building can go? An engineer named William Lamage has come up with a design for a building that is twice as high as the Sears Tower. Another one, Robert Sobel, 
believes that with today's technology, it is possible to build a 500-story building. No, sorry again. Your answer is too close to the original, and you neglected to cite the source of the information. How about you, Keith? The Cirrus Tower is a world marvel, and it is unknown how much higher skyscrapers of the future will rise. However, the design of one twice as tall as the Sears Tower is already on the books. And an architect, Robert Sobel, thinks we currently have sufficient know-how to build a skyscraper with over 500 stories. Bachman, page 15. You got it. This is a paraphrase, because you learned the information and successfully put it into your own words. I also noted that you understood that the best way to do this correctly was to not look at the original while writing. You also included a proper citation for the source of the material. Bravo! This gives Keith 1,000 points for a total score of 1,200 points, making him our winner. Congratulations! Johnny, tell Keith what he has won. Well, Keith, they may be number two, but they'll be number one with you when you receive this box of pencils. And those pencils will come in handy when you use this roll of cold, hard scantrons. Keith, how about this lifetime supply of blue books? They also come in green. And Keith, Every young scholar could use a brand new APA citation manual. And finally, Keith, you'll be receiving the home edition of Name That Paraphrase, found at www.overton.edu slash integrity. Now, Keith, you are not the only one that's going to enjoy that home version of Name That Paraphrase. Viewers at home, this is now your turn to play. I say, don't do that. Do what? Cheat, that's what. Don't you want your degree to mean anything? Don't you want to have a good career someday? What are you talking about? A degree from a reputable institution can mean a better career down the road. If you cheat, you take away from the value of the degree. Give that to me! Not until you earn it. You can do that by studying harder and more often. You should also seek out your professor's guidance as soon as you realize you may be having a problem. Don't wait until the last minute. Remember, you don't want to do anything that may jeopardize your reputation, the value of your degree, or your career goal. So a reputable degree increases my earning potential? Yes. Reputable gives you earnings. Why are we flying? I have no idea. Welcome to our patio seating. Oh, thank you, sweetie. Your server will be with you in just a minute. Enjoy. Thank you. You know what? I'll be right back. I just need to use the restroom. Uh, order me a strawberry lemonade. Erica? John. Erica. I can't even look at you anymore. I can't believe I was in love with a, a cheater. Oh, John, I can't lose you too. You know I got kicked out of Cal State Fullerton. Please take me back. No, Erica. The first time you cheated, I stayed with you because I thought you were a decent person. But with a second cheating offense, you crossed the line. There is no turning back. But John, the first time, I didn't know that I was cheating. Hmm. Yes, I did use the exact words out of an article. But I did give a citation. I didn't know I had to put quotation marks around someone else's exact words 
I didn't know. I really didn't know. But Erica, what about the second time? You turned in a paper that your roommate had written for another class. You had to know that you were gaining an unfair academic advantage because you didn't even spend any time writing your own original paper. You had to know that was cheating. But John, I really wasn't planning to cheat. Hmm. I was so busy, I didn't have time to write my own paper. It seemed so easy to just use the paper my roommate had already written, especially because she got an A on the assignment. I didn't realize the second offense would get me kicked out of school. Oh, John, please take me back, take me back. I'll never cheat again. No, sorry, Erica. I'm no longer on the menu. I'm with Marlena now, and she writes her own papers. We're going to go eat somewhere else now. Oh, honey, hold on, I forgot my purse. And I know how to properly cite my own sources, too. The preceding program was made possible by a grant from the University Mission and Goals Initiative and the support of students like you. Wow, wasn't that a great show? Hi, I'm Sandy Roten. You may recognize me from television, but I'm actually the Associate Dean of Students Judicial Affairs here at CSUF. I am here today to encourage you to pledge your support to sustain integrity here at Cal State Fullerton. We have many great educational programs at CSUF. Please help them to continue by pledging your support for integrity today. We have many wonderful volunteers standing by. My role on campus is to help students be successful. I want to help students reach their academic, career, and personal goals by understanding the expectations that we have of them as scholars. I also adjudicate cases when students struggle with success and are accused of academic dishonesty. What do I mean by success? Successful students will learn in each class, master their academic discipline or major, Contribute to the academic community by being involved in classes, engaging in student organizations and activities, and following university policies and procedures. Develop intellectually, emotionally, socially, ethically, and graduate from Cal State Fullerton and assume their role as responsible and ethical global citizens. You have probably figured out by now that there are several types of academic dishonesty. Everyone is responsible for academic integrity. Remember, integrity begins with I. So, let's talk about how to be a successful student. Sometimes you may be tempted to cheat on an exam. If you are properly prepared for an exam, you should have no reason to cheat. Here are some ways to ensure that you are ready to take every test. Attend class every day. Be prepared for class and be prepared to learn. Ask questions, answer questions. Take good notes. Set study times for each day. Never sit next to a friend during an exam. Don't have any extra items at your desk like a cell phone. 
Don't try to get answers from others who have already taken the exam. Never ask someone to take an exam or an entire course as a hired brain for you. You will get caught. Keep in mind that online exams are also monitored and have the same academic rigor. You may remember we also learned about the definition of plagiarism from our friends in that wonderful puppet show, Integrity Street. Plagiarism is a serious problem on campus. In fact, over 70% of the cases referred to my office are plagiarism cases. But there are some very simple steps you can take to avoid plagiarism, which will also help make you a better writer. If you use another person's exact words in a direct quote, you must always do both of the following. Provide a citation either in the text or in a footnote and enclose the words in quotation marks. Often when writing, you may want to paraphrase a person's ideas. If you paraphrase another person's ideas, thoughts, research, data, or creations, you must do the following. Put these ideas in your own words without distorting the original meaning. Make sure you are not just rearranging or replacing a few words. And cite the source in the text or in a footnote. No quotation marks are needed because these are not the exact words of another. To effectively paraphrase, do the following. Reread the original text until you understand it. Set the original aside so you can't see the text. Write your own version. Check your paraphrase against the original text to see that the information is accurate. Acknowledge the source in the paragraph and also in your bibliography. You must cite every source that you use and give credit for any other person's intellectual property. This includes books, periodicals, pamphlets, statistics, graphs, government documents, personal interviews, and websites, to name just a few. There are many other ways you can be successful when working on written assignments. When you are writing a paper, be sure to leave yourself enough time to do it right. Pick a topic that interests you and complete your research well ahead of the due date. Remember, when using the internet for research, never cut and paste information directly from the internet into your paper. Leave yourself enough time to write, rewrite, edit, and refine the finished product before turning it in. If you have questions at any time during the process, visit your instructor during office hours to discuss your paper. Sometimes you may be asked to do a written assignment with a partner or a team member. Remember, if your name is on the assignment, everyone is responsible for the work. Also, be careful not to collaborate with another student on a written assignment without the permission of the instructor. Always protect your work. One of the reasons I want you to understand all of this is because there are severe consequences if you do not follow the rules. All students have a duty to understand what constitutes academic dishonesty. So you can receive a consequence even if you are unaware that your actions are in violation of our policy. Here are some examples of the possible consequences. Faculty can assess consequences ranging from an oral reprimand to an F in the course. Judicial affairs can also assess the following consequences. Dismissal from your academic department, Suspension from CSUF and all CSU campuses for a period of time. Remember, two acts of dishonesty will result in suspension from all CSU campuses. Expulsion from all CSU campuses. Permanently being kicked out with a permanent notation on your transcript. Permanent loss of privilege to attend Cal State Fullerton. Revocation of admission or degree. Now, some of you may be thinking, this doesn't concern me. I'll just continue to enjoy all the great educational programs that CSUF provides without worrying about integrity. But let me tell you why you should be concerned about integrity on campus. If you cheat, you cheat yourself out of learning. If other students in your class cheat, they gain an unfair academic advantage over you. This can degrade the value of your college degree and diminish the prestige of a Cal State Fullerton education. 
If you have enjoyed today's programming and want to continue to support integrity on campus, here's what you can do. Pledge to be an honorable student and encourage your friends to do the same. Pledge to develop good study habits and to cite sources properly. Pledge to develop good working relationships with your instructors. Pledge to take advantage of resources that can help you, such as the University Learning Center, the Writing Center, and the Math Tutoring Center. Pledge to become a successful Titan Scholar. Well, there you have it. As the Associate Dean Judicial Affairs, not only is it my job to help you understand the expectations of the university and to help you meet them, but I am also the one who is responsible for suspending students on campus each year for academic dishonesty. So, although you have seen a lot of me today, trust me, after this broadcast, you will never want to have to see me again. Making integrity count is more than one, two, three. Making integrity count takes commitment from you and me, 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 me. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Learning is preeminent. We've all heard that cry. But learning without integrity makes people like me sigh, 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 sigh. Integrity, what's that mean? Do you think we all agree? I think honor, respect, truthfulness, and responsibility. Looky here. Students want to be successful. That we can't deny. So it's up to you to see it through. Integrity starts with I, 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 I. Making integrity count is more than one, two, three. Making integrity count takes commitment from you and me, 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 me. 